So this was all about motor communication disorders. Now let's come into dysphagia. Swallowing or deglutition is a process by which the food is masticated, processed, and passed down from the stomach via pharynx to the esophagus. So there are three stages of swallowing, oral, pharyngeal, and the esophageal stage. Oral and pharyngeal stages are the ones which are taken care of by the speech therapist. Esophageal, uh, uh, esophageal dysphagia is taken, by the, uh, taken care by the gastroenterologist. So coming to the first stage, oral phase, it's a complete voluntary phase and it is under the individual's control. So here the food is masticated, it is mixed with saliva, a bolus is formed and the bolus is transported towards the back of the uh, tongue. Once the food is put uh, shifted to the back of the tongue or transported to the back of the tongue, that's where the pharyngeal phase begins and that's the involuntary phase. This is where the swallow reflex is triggered, the laryngeal move upwards, anterior, causing the glottis to temporarily close, respiration is stopped for a minute, uh, for a second, and opening of the upper esophageal sphincters, and that's with, which propels down the food into esophagus. So this is the pharyngeal phase. In short, again, it is an involuntary phase, not under control of humans. So the third is the esophageal phase, which again, involuntary phase, the bolus is carried down to the stomach by the peristaltic movement of the esophageal muscles. The involuntary phases of the swallowing are under the control of swallowing centers located in the lower pons and medulla in the brainstem. And this is just about the automatic uh, involuntary uh, swallowing I'm talking about. When we consume a food, it is not just involuntary. Involuntary is when you're just trying to swallow your saliva. When I'm giving a presentation, there is saliva I'm swallowing. So that's the complete involuntary activity that is being conducted. But when I'm trying to eat food, when I'm trying to eat... Uh, eat or drink we also have voluntary actions and that that's where the cerebellum and the higher cortical areas come into a picture and hence a brainstream stroke or a stroke in any part of your brain can lead to dysphagia so dysphagia is difficulty in swallowing solids or liquids what are the signs of dysphagia the individual may report to us saying they have a lot of coughing or choking while eating or drinking sensation of food being stuck not being able to chew food or wet gurgly voice quality drooling a lot of regurgitation or a reduced oral intake a lot of pe uh, patients report to us saying that and they are you know they are not able to consume food and they have reducing weight and everything so that's one of the things or one of the signs of dysphagia we reduce oh we know maybe usko acidity hai, yeah you know they have something else but no it could be a sign of dysphagia also so if the individual reports with such a complaint a detailed swallow evaluation is very much warranted and please con contact the speech therapist whenever around you as they can be at a risk for aspiration also now, when the patient reports to us with these clear signs of dysphagia, choking, coughing, a direct referral to a speech therapist is made. But when the cases are very mild, when the patient is walking, talking, but they still had a stroke and they walk in, there are usually things uh, that people don't, rather it is ignored. The swallowing part is ignored, which is not correct. A lot of patients could have mild risk of aspiration or a silence uh, aspiration, which is needs to rule out. So instead of contacting a speech therapist, a registered nurse herself can do a swallow screening test for the patient. It is, and it is essential because it is it needs to rule out risk of aspiration and to determine the mode of nutritional intake. Now, a lot of hospitals have taken this model wherein as the patient comes in for admission, MRI, CT scans, and all the processes are done, and they also include a swallow evaluation to determine if the patient should be inserted with a rice tube or a pegs tube, or a, or an oral diet should be sufficient for the patient. So now coming to a swallow screening. So before screening, what we could do is we should always check the awareness or alertness level of the patient. A quick cognitive screening: ask the patient what the name is, where they are, how what they ate, or what they did. Check quickly, check their facial asymmetry if there is no drooping or any, if there is no weakness on the face. Tongue movements, if they're able to move their tongues around properly or if you feel there is flaccidness or any sluggishness in the tongue. And also check, very important, check for the cough. If you think any of these things are not present or there is something is wrong there, no, do not proceed for a swallow screening test. But if you think everything is fine, a swallow screening can, for aspiration can be initiated. 
so what uh, what is done usually is patient is made to sit upright at 80 to 90 degrees and one tablespoon of water is given if the patient is swallows well if there are no other signs of, of dysphagia, what we just saw in the previous scheme, then a three ounce water swallow test is conducted. If coughing or any signs of aspiration is present, then a speech language pathologist is, uh, uh, is like referred for. Or if the therapist is not around or tube feeding is considered, but if the patient passes, then he can, start, uh, can be started on uh, oral diets. So we have a lot of validated screening protocols available. These are the few lists. Yale swallow protocol and gagging swallow screening and three hours water swallow test are very widely used. Now the speech language pathologist will conduct a detailed cranial nerve examination, a clinical swallow examination and instrumental swallow assessment if required. That is fees or MBS is usually conducted. Now coming to dysphagia management, and management basically comprises of swallowing therapy. It can be exercises, uh, thermal stimulation, or even electrical stimulation. So recent advances and recent technologies have provided us, uh, us with electrical stimulation for laryngeal elevation and stimulating the muscles in the, in the laryngeal area itself. Uh, sometimes just dietary changes, that is the bolus or texture modification that itself helps us. And then uh, if the patient is uh, very severe and we know the patient may or may not eat for some time, then uh, an RT tube is inserted or NGT tube is inserted. And if you think the patient may or may not be able to eat for, for a long period of time in cases of global aphasia, uh, then a PEG tube is usually considered. So takeaway message from today's PPT from my and Prajita's PPT is that early identification of speech and swallowing issues leads to early intervention, reduced hospital stay, leads to better recovery post-stroke and better quality of life.